Hello everybody, welcome back to my let's play of Aurora 4X, where we left off last, I've had just been attacked, and all of our ships, have, most of our ships have been destroyed. We have only a single surviving exploration ship left, who managed to with, um, avoid being destroyed completely, and the invaders have miraculously disappeared. Where they went, nobody knows. When they will return, that's something we we'll, we will hope we'll never find out. But it, but if we are ever to survive, we must leave Earth. We must spread throughout the galaxy so that if they return and when they return, they will not be able to wipe us out in a single blow, like they tried to do before. So to that so, the, so to that end, let's start colonizing. First and foremost, though, we'll go ahead and do what we can to rescue the crew of the ships that were destroyed. So we'll get our ship and we'll go and get it to rescue all the survivors. And return them to Earth. Shouldn't take very long at all. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll also go ahead and do what we can to rebuild our combat fleet. And we'll also I won't do it, won't tool many constructing yards, but we will go ahead and rebuild them. So we'll get another five commercial yards and two naval yards. There they are. <coughs> this should ensure that we will be able to build all the ships we need to um, expand. So what do we have on Earth? We have... we we'll need some infrastructure. We'll get some infrastructure up and running. So in order to colonize, you need to be able to basically set a planet as... Um, as a populated system, right? So all these colonies, they're not very much at all. So the civilians will not attempt to actually start working on them. Um, we'll go ahead and pick up these pods. Ah, of course. We'll move that and yeah, so shipyard task group is being built too, so it can't actually execute any orders. So we will use this one, get rid of it because it's a one-off, and that will allow you, that would basically transfer the orders across. And now it will be able to rescue all the life pods. There we go. <clears throat> so we'll wait. For, we'll let the research finish. Construction will continue. Get the infrastructure up nice and early. Yeah, that won't finish first. Mm 
working on technologies. All right, gas turrets are done. So now we'll get some infrastructure. And first thing we'll need is we're going to need a freighter to actually move it. So Sydney's our freighter, so that's what we'll tool first. We'll build that. And we'll move these up to 25 as well. Keep working on them. <clears throat> we need more of these. Oh, and these are exploration craft. Okay. We'll stick an extra slip here, a slipway for our combat ships. Oh, that one's got counter measures too. There we go. We'll need terraforming. There we go. Terraforming modules, of course, are the components on a ship that will let you actually terraform a planet. Now, you can build... I should be able to build a terraforming installation, yep, without needing the tech. The module simply allows you to place the component inside a ship or orbital. The terraforming rate is identical for both. However, the... Um, I believe the the shipyard ones, can, the shipwise one, can actually be inf influenced by commander levels, but we'll double check that one can actually have some. We'll actually send Canberra through. Where do they come from? Yeah, we'll send Canberra through, well, into Canberra. And we'll leave it there because um, the way that I removed the invaders, I'm not actually sure if they'll stay gone. I have also disabled them as well, so we'll have to wait and see for the moment. But we'll finish off the grav survey. So our brave explorers have returned to, to the camera system to see if they can figure out where the attackers came from and where they went. But after several weeks of exploration, there does not appear to be any sign of them. All right, our first the first, the first, uh, oh, that's the second river that's been completed. So because of the because of the amount of missiles that attacked Earth, humanity has concentrated its production on uh, its point defense systems, especially since that's the lot since the only shipyard remaining in orbit. Until further shipyards can be rebuilt and more construction can be uh, brought on the way.
right, there's a terraforming module. We need a construction brigade. We will need salvage module. So there's a lot of minerals components in orbit le left in orbit, and it will be extremely useful to have some of them back. There's another Sydney. All right, so that's our freighter. So let's have a look. Where shall we go first? Now, we need jump gates to make extra solar habitation viable. So what we'll do is we'll go where we have at least some minerals. So that is going to be Mars. It's the easiest to colonize out of all the um, solar bodies, but it also happens to have a couple of thousand uranium. So, not bad. It also has an ice sheet as well, so that will make terraforming it a little bit easier. And it also has a lower temperature factor, so should be um, should require less greenhouse gases to actually get it uh, working. So we'll grab the Sydney class freighter, and we will load up infrastructure. And we'll go to Mars and we'll unload the infrastructure. We'll do that until we run out of infrastructure. All right, and in response to Mars being branded a colony of humanity, our intrepid and brave civilians have launched a colony ship that will ferry passengers to Mars. I do seem a little bit unnerved and a little bit reluctant to head out due to the recent threat posed by the invading ships. Yeah, so because Earth is still classified as a hostile system, um, they are basically not going to be able to do anything. But we'll, leave, we'll let that run, and eventually it'll declassify, and uh, they'll go, go back about the business.
in order to link to the other systems, it has been decided that Huya will take his labs and after completing new designs on construction processes, will proceed to design a jump gate construction module to allow humanity to more easily expand into the nearby systems. where we will continue develop, improving our terraforming capability. And we'll also design a terraforming orbital as well. All right, now deployment time is not really going to matter because as we terraform, we're going to be only really terraforming existing colonies. Um, that will help promote civilian shipping and it will also ensure that uh, we don't need much deployment time or anything like that. We shouldn't need any deployment time anyway because it'll be commercial. So we'll need some terraforming modules. Actually, we are missing one component. We're missing the orbital habitat component. So we'll need to get that, which will be in logistics. Here it is. Put that to the top. Yeah, perfect. We still have plenty of gas turrets, so we'll keep building rivers. What kind of... Um, we still have laser ones, so we'll build some of those once we actually have some shipyards that can build it. Alright, so there's the construction brigade, so we'll start training up some of those. Construction brigades basically count as factories. So each construction brigade will count as one factory worth of production. Uh, the difference being, the, the key issue being that the ground units, so they need to be transferred using ground unit tr um, transport bays. And also they are not affected by planetary morale. So if you need to build something and the people won't build it for you, Construction brigades will.
Uh, first reports from the mines, it appears that uh, the mines are no longer able to locate any titanium on Earth. So, we have 85, almost 85 and a half thousand tons of titanium, and that is it. If that runs out before we can get off, uh, off world, humanity is going to be in trouble. Now, looking at the survey reports, Brooks is going to be our best bet. Where is it at the moment? Brooks is... out there. Okay. Alternative option will be... UX25. It has more of it, and the accessibility is still very good. So UX25... So we'll load a single mass driver from Earth. And we will take it to UX25. And off it goes. Ah, there it is. So, not quite as far as Brooks, but we're still some distance out beyond the orbit of Neptune. How's the fuel situation? 85? Yep, it can easily make a trip. So one mass driver is 25,000, same as a mine. So how many mines do we actually have on Earth? We have 480. I think we will get civilians to move about 200 of them. So that way we don't have to pay for the fuel. So yeah, civilian shipping um, doesn't actually track fuel. So once built, they can basically fly as far as they need to. Yeah, another river class. So, it's uh, civilian shipping is fantastic for those super long distance transportation that you need. And they're good. It looks like Canberra has enough extra jump point in there. Since we have plenty of fuel and we need that tritanium, load mine. Unload and refuel. A little cycle of that. We'll do it nine nine times. That's a hundred trips. And we'll just, du just double it again. Alright. We'll bring this guy back. All right, terraforming complete. We'll go ahead and get some more.
and our first automated mine has arrived. This has moved. This has moved UX25 into the automated mining colonies category. So we'll go ahead and set Earth as destination. And we'll need a planetary governor as well to try and boost the mining yield. So we will get a mining focused governor. There we go. And now we have a little bit more output. Nope. This one. So 17.6 per mine. So that's pretty good. All right, so now we have a replacement source of Tritanium. We'll scrap the default orders. And what we'll do is we'll actually get civilians to ship the other hundred mines. So we don't need the mass driver. We'll add another 50 of those. There we go. And we'll add a little more, well, we'll, we'll subsidize them a little bit so they will actually hopefully build a freighter. Not that they'll actually do anything with it until Sol is no longer a combat system. That's interesting. But we have our orbital habitat. Here it is. Terraformer Perry. So with the orbital habitat module, it has had a little bit of habitation capacity, but that's not important. What's important is that it's now classified as an orbital, orbital, uh, orbital habitat. And what this means is that it doesn't, it doesn't have to be built at a shipyard. It can be built directly by industry. So now we can build it as big as we want. There, a million ton terraformer, 30 modules, sounds pretty good to me. Now I want to get it up to 300 kilometers a second because that's usually good enough to catch most planets. If it needs to be any faster than that, then we'll get, uh, we'll get a tug. We'll need to give it a fair amount of fuel. It would be really nice if we had a bigger fuel tank, but here we are. There we go. And that should be fine. So 300 kilometers a second, million tons, and 9.5 billion kilometers. So that should be enough. We can always refuel. It's only 3 million, li million liters, so that should be fine. And because it's all commercial, no maintenance. Brilliant. Let's go ahead and put one in for construction. We'll need all of our production. All right. Excellent. And that is that for this episode. Thank you very much for continuing to watch. And we will continue on in the next one.